Welcome back. We'll pick up with the rest of chart eight from chapter six. So O2, this is supposed to be O with the two down here when that was typed. That wasn't really an option. Um, actually, I'm just going to go ahead and make that change right now. Two. Okay. So oxygen um, in the air we breathe comes in the form of O2. If you've ever taken chemistry, um, it's a, it's a molecule. It's not just one atom. It's a molecule. And your body needs to have the, um, the O2 in order to survive. All right. OB or OBS, this is obstetrics. Uh, a doctor that specializes in obstetrics specializes in the birthing of babies. Then we have OBRA. Now, I can't do this uh, justice by explaining it. Um, so I found another video, so I'll let you watch the video. In this video, we'll introduce you to a benefits program called COBRA and explain how it works. COBRA is an acronym for the Consolidated Omnibus Budget Reconciliation Act, but luckily it is almost always referred to as COBRA. COBRA gives you the opportunity to continue in your employer-sponsored health plan if you lose your job. So how does it work? You are eligible for COBRA if your company's health plan covers at least 20 employees and you have had an acceptable qualifying event. A qualifying event is something that causes you to lose your health coverage. For an employee, a qualifying event can include quitting your job, having your hours cut back, or losing your job for most any reason other than gross misconduct, like stealing. As long as your spouse or other dependents were covered on your medical plan before the qualifying event, they too can be covered on COBRA. Examples of qualifying events where your spouse or other dependents might enroll in COBRA coverage are divorce or legal separation, you become eligible for Medicare and your spouse is on your health plan, your dependent no longer qualifies as a dependent under your health plan, or if you pass away. If you have one of these qualifying events, your employer is responsible for notifying you of your option to enroll in COBRA coverage within 14 days, and you will have at least 60 days to decide if you want to enroll. If you choose COBRA coverage, the length of time you can keep it depends on your qualifying event. For employee events like termination and reduction of hours, you can keep COBRA coverage for up to 18 months starting from the date of the qualifying event. For all other events, your spouse and other dependents can have coverage for up to 36 months. So how much does it cost to get COBRA coverage? Before starting COBRA, you split the cost of your health plan in some way with your employer so that you paid some of the cost and your employer paid some of the cost. Now that your employer is no longer paying a portion of the cost, you will pay for 100% of the plan cost. In addition, there is a fee to cover the cost of administering the COBRA program. It's usually around 2%, so your total monthly cost will likely be 102% of the cost of the plan. Despite the expense, this still might be the most cost-effective way to get a quality health plan compared to alternatives available to you at the time. Be sure to do adequate research on both the cost and the level of coverage for a plan before you decide whether to choose COBRA or another option. To sum it up, COBRA provides the ability for you and the dependents covered on your health plan to keep coverage after you lose your job or lose coverage for other reasons. The cost is generally 102% of the full cost of the plan, and you can keep it for 18 or 36 months, depending upon the qualifying event. So, um, if you've ever worked and quit a job, uh, you will get a COBRA letter as part of the Omnibus Budget Reconciliation Act. OD, this is lowercase, this is for overdose. So, um, right now we have an opiate epidemic going on where uh, people are overdosing on opiates. So I would document that in my report as a suspected OD of opiates, whether it's heroin, uh, Norco, Vicodin, whatever. OD, 
This can mean right eye, also known as ocular dextra. So those two are the same thing. Um, we get a lot of our medical terms from Latin. Ocular just means eye. Dextra means right. So if you remember from the um, left ear, right ear, right? And I had to do the Mickey Mouse ears and pull them forward. And your right side kind of looked like a D. So that's how I can remember it. But the actual Latin is dextra for the D. Um, and then the O means I because it's ocular, right? Like binoculars. And then doctor of optometry, um, a doctor of optometry goes, does not go to medical school. They go to their own special optometry school, uh, and they can prescribe specific medications, um, and they can do medical procedures, that kind of thing, uh, some more vision correction surgeries of the eye, I should say. All right. Ointment, shortened as oint. OJ, orange juice. That one's kind of an everyday one as well. Out of bed. Um, out of bed. So this could describe how many hours a day the patient should be out of bed so that they don't um, let their muscles kind of waste away. Because if you don't use them, you lose them. It could be uh, describing where... Um, an injury takes place if the patient was out of bed, if they're normally bed confined or uh, they don't move around very well. Okay. OP, this is outpatient, right? You have outpatient facilities now for surgery, so you don't have to stay in a hospital. Um, if you stay in a hospital where it's like an overnight thing or you're staying like in a That is considered an outpatient procedure. Now, you have OPD or OPC, depending on if you're talking about an outpatient department or an outpatient clinic. This is where you're not going to be um, uh, you know, gone through the admission and discharge where you're going to stay for a long time. This is like if you go to like an after-hours clinic would be considered an outpatient clinic. OR, this is an operating room. Um, so this is where they perform surgery, the operating room. OR, right? Like we say the ER, the emergency room, OR, operating room. Orth is short for orthopedics. Okay, it's the root of ortho, right? Which would be the combining form, if you remember that. OS, when it's lowercase, refers to your mouth. I'm not really sure how to remember that one for you. Usually my students come up with some quick, easy solution to, to remember things. I don't have one for that. But uppercase O and uppercase S, this is the left eye. Okay, so the O we know means ocular, like binocular, right? And then the S in Latin means sinistra, which means left in Latin, sinistra. So uh, how I remember this is like sinister. If something is sinister, it's kind of evil. And if you ever look at um, videos where, say, they, um, they put like an angel on one shoulder and the devil on the other and they're like going back and forth trying to get the person to do whatever it is they want to do um it's always the devil is always on the left right and then and then like the right hand you know if if somebody is their right hand it's their right hand man right that's supposed to be good uh sinister is left right okay OSHA. OSHA. We talked about this um, in chapter 13. Okay. And actually, I have a really great video for that. I have a really great video for that. So I want to preface this video with the fact that um, OSHA is a government 
thing, right? So we have the Michigan OSHA, which is called My OSHA, okay? And uh, this is their, their introductory video. This year, the Michigan Occupational Safety and Health Administration, also known as MIOSHA, is celebrating its 40th anniversary. That's four decades of keeping Michigan safe and healthy at work. Michigan workplaces are far safer today than they were in 1975, the year that MIOSHA became effective. We have seen an overall downward trend in injuries, illnesses, and fatalities on the job. MIOSHA has a duty to enforce workplace safety and health regulations. And we strive to do that in a fair and consistent manner. But we're also committed to partnering with employers and employees through our consultation, education, and training services. MIOSHA has many consultation services. Those include alliances, partnerships, and recognition programs to connect MIOSHA to industry and to recognize employers for their safety and health achievements. The mission of the Wage and Hour Program is to fairly and efficiently enforce the laws that protect the wages and fringe benefit of Michigan employees. An employee that believes they're owed unpaid wages or fringe benefits may file a complaint with the Wage and Hour Program. Employers or employee groups that want more information about the laws that we enforce may contact our office. We arrange speaking engagements and we also have publications online in English, Spanish, and Arabic that provide more information about the laws we enforce. I have been with the Wage and Hour program for 20 years and in that period of time we've collected millions of dollars in unpaid wages for Michigan workers and we've also educated employers on what the requirements are of the laws that we enforce. We're here to help Michigan employers and employees. The construction division enforces the construction safety and health regulations, but employers and employees can call up to our office and speak with representatives to see how what they are performing can be handled in a situation that is compliant with our rules and regulations. It's very important for the employers and employees to follow these regulations because even though only 4% of the Michigan workforce is engaged in construction activities, they comprise 40% of the fatalities program related that occur in Michigan. Once a year, we have enforcement personnel perform consultation activities in which it's called Take a Stand for Safety Day. And this is where employers can outreach to us so that they can have an inspection where it's only consultative activities being performed. The Radiation Safety Section is responsible for the registration of and regulatory inspection of x-ray machine facilities throughout the state of Michigan. There are about 10,000 x-ray facilities in the state with about 29,000 x-ray machines that we visit. We investigate uh, high dose exposure to people and patients and we regulate that as well and they can benefit from our department by going to our website and investigating how they can be best be protected from high exposure to radiation. The mission of the General Industry Safety and Health Division is to enforce MIOSHA workplace rules in general industry. In the 15 years that I've worked here, we have the tools and the talent to help people send their people home safe and healthy every day so that they can pick their kids up and so they're able to come to work tomorrow too. This is a human resource and by protecting that resource, everything you do gets better. Quality productivity, reliability is improved by having your folks safe and healthy at work. Uh, MIOSHA has a lot of services for uh, helping employers within the uh, working environment, such as the consultation and education group, uh, as a, a way that they can get training and have a, a risk-free method of asking questions to get answers about common issues that they deal with out there in the field. We also have an on-site consultation team where we can go out to their places of employment and conduct inspections without issuing citations so that they can get hazards that they have on their job site identified and corrected without fear of penalty for that. There's a long-term benefit to an employer to emphasize safety and health in their workplace, not only from a productivity standpoint, but also from the risk that they have at the bottom line. So a lot of it's risk control and, and long-term sustainability for an organization.
I think people should know that, you know, my OSHA really is about helping people and businesses. So there's nothing to be afraid of. It's really that we are here to help, whether it be enforcement or the consultation group. You can ask any of us any questions. Please use our website. I mean, we have a lot of great resources there. We really want to help employers get the tools they need to be in compliance. It's not about being punitive. It really is about being helpful. As you can see, MIOSHA is all about being proactive. We're here to help ensure safe and helpful workplaces, and we have great education and tools available to help create effective safety and health management systems. MIOSHA is dedicated to protecting Michigan's working men and women, and we welcome the opportunity to partner with employers and employees to continue making a difference in the lives of Michigan workers and their families. All right, so that's my OSHA. That's what they're responsible for. That's what they, they do is safety. Okay. OT, so this is occupational therapy. You can also be considered an occupational therapist. Either or. Okay, occupational therapy specializes in activities of daily living. OTC, this is over the counter. Like you can get Tylenol over the counter, Motrin over the counter, but you cannot get Norco or Vicodin over the counter. OU, um, this is each eye or both eyes. Okay, you can remember with the ear, like the U, both, right? Okay, OV, this is office visit. If you go into the doctor's office um, to get checked out, that's an office visit. Okay, OZ, this is ounce. There's um, 16 ounces in a pound, an ounce. It's a measurement of weight. P with a line over it means after, just like A with a line over it means before. So like P, like post, after, like posterior, you're behind. P with a line over it means after. And then a capital P, this could either mean pulse if it's in the section for vital signs, or it could stand for phosphorus. Uh, capital P is the uh, label for the element phosphorus. Okay, so uh, that concludes this recording for chart eight. We'll pick up with chapter seven, section four.